So uh, let's talk about relaxation. What is relaxation? So relaxation is talking about you go from a high energy state to the low energy state. So in this particular case, I use the broad sphere. I call it E, excitation state, right? This can be confusing because sometimes people will say it's zero, therefore it isn't, C, isn't zero, it's ground state. So zero doesn't need to be ground state. Just look at the context carefully. And then the bottom one is the G, the ground state, I call it one. So what is the coherence time for T1? It basically is talking about how much time, right? T1 is the time it takes to go from, let me, don't, don't call it E, don't call it zero, from the excited state to the ground state. That is not difficult, right? It basically is statistics, okay? On average, how much time, right? So how do we do an experiment in experiment? So you will do this first, you prepare it in the excited state. And then after T, yeah, after T equals to, just after T, after some time T, what you do is you do the, oh, maybe the best is called D. S equal T equal to D. Wait. It means wait for that much time. And you do the measurement. Right? So you can measure. It can be either at, still at excited state. You're, oh, cool. You're still at excited state. Or you can get the ground state. Right? And then you repeat for, let's say, 1,000 times to get the statistics, right? So for the same D, right? So that's like the experiment. This is a real uh, computer, quantum computer that we did. So we at D, maybe equal to very short one nanosecond. We do a measurement. Basically, almost 100% are still at the excited state. Then we keep waiting. For example, we wait for 200 microsecond. Then we measure again. Sometimes we get zero, sometimes we get one, but only about one, two, three, maybe about 30 to 40 percent are still at the one state when I do the measurement. Yeah. No, you're you from excited state to ground state, right? And they, so it's just that you put a ball on the top of the hill. When the time is really long, you expect all the ball will go, just, just go down. But as a function of time, it seems like the two curves are symmetrical. It is in the, because it's in log scale, that's why it's not symmetrical. Log one, right? This is zero, log zero is like infinity, negative infinity, right? But log one is like zero, okay. right? Yeah, it won't be symmetrical. But you add them together, it will be one. So let's only concentrate looking at the one state. Okay, that, that's a good point, right? If you put in linear scale, you find that they're symmetrical. Okay, so yeah, for each point in for the case, they all add to one. They should add to one, yes. So then you will look at the percentage. How do you see that? You will see uh, here is log scale, uh, lin uh, log scale. Let me look at the linear scale. It will be something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So this is time, and this is the percentage of one. I should not call one, because one is actually ground state here. I should call it percentage of excited state. So this is bad. This, this actually, let's call it the uh, excited state, right? So, so you see that there are lots of confusion, right? I, when I put on this slide, I did not realize that I'm going to call the ground as the one. In this experiment, I call the excited state as one. Okay, so just be careful, right? We can fit this as this one, e to the power negative t over t1. And t1 is the so-called t1 relaxation time. Okay? In this case, it's about 219 microsecond. But, you know, what percentage of the um, like curve is that? 
what percentage if you fit t1 equal to this it means decay by 63 percent right okay. yeah just exponential like e to the power negative one so of course that it means that you should not operate up to t1 right because it is pretty degraded already but then it means that maybe for 100 microseconds, I want to finish all the operation of my quantum gates before it decay. Yeah. So where do you go with 63 percent? Is there like some... E to the power negative one. Okay. Why is that? Why the This is how we de define the decay time, just like RC circle, right? Yeah. So this is one of them. And then another one is the so-called defacing time. So what is the meaning of defacing? So if we look at the broad sphere, now I need to draw a 3D one. So this is the broad sphere. And we say this is the excited state. This is the ground state, right? And this point may be one over square root two, excited state plus the ground state. In our previous language, it's just a plus state, one over square root two, zero plus one. Now, if I have a vector here, it's possible that it's going to rotate around here. So it does not lose the energy. For example, when it reach here, it becomes one over square root two e minus the ground state, right? The first, you will prepare everything in the ground state. Okay, and then you will apply a pulse. We call a pi over two pulse. So that you bring it to the superposition of the E and the ground state. So what does it mean? Think about this. I start with the ground state, yeah? It's easy, let it decay, everything in the ground state. And then I apply a pulse to it. So it was at this state, I apply a pulse, then it will bring me to here. This is the pi over two pulse. That's why it's called pi over two, because it rotates by pi over two. If it is pi, then I will bring it to the excited state. You can do this, right? Well, isn't that what you're doing? In that, well, as you see the oscillations going up and down, you just keep applying statistically in the RF or extended period of time so that it goes between... No, no not here yet. Let, let's read this, this one. Start with ground, right? I apply a pulse to here, then it becomes a superposition of this state. Mm -hmm. That's how we do the measurement. Is that okay? And then what we do is this. You just wait. Again, you will wait for t equal to d. And then what will you do? you actually will apply another pi over two pulse. Now, what I'm trying to say is, we will uh, wait for T, but we set up such that it rotates along the equator. Okay, this is something we can do by detuning or whatever, which we learn in the future. Okay, I say something wrong. So we apply, I apply this pulse to here. So if it is, uh, if rotator to, or if there's no rotation, right, then you will get the ground state, uh, the excited state. And if it rotated to this one, then you will get the ground state. Is that okay? So let me say again, I apply, I prepare in ground state, I apply a pi pulse, it come to here, but I set up such that it will rotate along the equator for a certain frequency. That is the experiment that I will do. And then I apply the pulse to it. If it happened to be here, 
then I will bring it to excited state. If it happened to here, then it will bring to the ground state. This one okay? Still the same as what I said before, the only difference is just that the rotation is not due to defacing, it is due to my setup that it is rotating. Okay? Everything is still the same. It's just the cause of the rotation, not defacing. We are not at defacing yet. It's just the rotation. So then how do you explain this? Yeah, let's just wait for that. <laughs> okay, so what do you expect? What do you expect? So you will expect something like this. You start with one, and then you have this probability when we're doing the measurement, right? Sometimes, uh, depends on the time. Some, I will get 100% excited state or 100% ground state, right? When there is if, no, defacing. If there's no defacing. Is that okay? When there's no defacing. Now, what is defacing? When there is defacing, you will, the vector, it will become a mixed state. It can be modeled as a mixed state. And the vector will become shorter than one. The state. It is just that I have many states here. In order to model it, there is a way to model it. Because it becomes a mixed state, you can actually have many of these states here. Okay, you model it in that way. Because they just pull against each other, it's no longer a pure state. Okay, now if you repeat this experiment, then you will find that it's because more and more difficult to distinguish zero and one, because once you completely deface, they have the same probability of getting zero and one. Yeah, because it is short, right? You just try to rotate it. You find that when you do the measurement, the effective vector becomes shorter and shorter. And that's why you have this envelope, which will tend to 50% of each. Okay. Yeah. Think, imagine if your vector is just becomes a zero at this right, almost no length, effective length, become a mixed state. This a, a here. Yeah. This a, the effective a is something minus something, right? It becomes just a very short. When you do the measurement, you will get fifty percent one and fifty percent zero. Right. And this one envelope can be modeled as e to the power negative t divided by t2. And that is the defacing time. Yeah, I, I should go through one more time, right? Because I mess you up. Don't think about t1 first. First, understand what I'm saying here. Then you should be able to compare to t1, right? Uh, again, let me say what we do. We prepare everything at the ground state, apply a pi over two pulse to bring it to the superposition state on the equator. In this setup, I would have something called detuning so that it actually will just precess or rotate along this equator. If I wait for t, time equal to d, and then apply the pi over 2 again. If it is at this point, then you will become an excited state when I do measurement. If it happens that you rotate to here, I apply pi over 2, it becomes the ground state again. And all those in between, I have different probability of getting excited or ground, right? You just go through the, the rotation. So I will get an oscillation pattern like this. And this frequency is the precess, the frequency that it is rotating. But however, in the real measurement, you will see that this one is decaying. And why this is decaying? Because this vector, right, on the broad sphere is no longer a pure vector. If it's a pure vector, it's always on the broad sphere surface. It becomes a mixed state. And to model this, we can model it as a shorter and shorter vector. Okay, just trust it, trust me. That's how we model it. Okay? 
because it can become a ensemble or big stage, you can imagine you have many vectors in different direction, and you become one effective one. Okay, and when because this is short, when I project, for example, you were here, I apply pi over two, you bring it to excited state, right? When you measure, you get one hundred percent excited state. But when it is only half of the length, I bring it here. This one is not 100% excited state. It has certain component of zero state. Again, do not look at 3D space. Do not tell me that uh, this is not orthogonal, okay? When you are at this point, it's, it means you have certain percentage of one state, right? And that's why your magnitude is no 100%. You becomes eventually, you have 50% of zero states and 50% of one state, no matter where you are after this operation. Because eventually you are so short, you become just at a point at the center of the block sphere. And that's why you have decay. And now you just fit this model, T over square root T2 will fit it, and this T2 is called the defacing time. So this kind of is going to limit how long we can uh, operate on the qubit because eventually we're not going to know where it is any, anymore. Right, yeah, eventually it becomes a mixed state. Yeah, you lose the information. And now go back to your question. You said that even at this point, isn't that we also have the effect of T1? It also will decay, right? It's a higher energy state compared to the ground state. So actually, we have something called T2 star. What we are measuring here should call T2. In experiment, what we measure is T2. It's the effect of T1 and T2 together. Okay, the experiment, what we get is called T star, which composed the pure T2 and T1. So this one, uh, sometimes that's why people don't call this T2, we call it T5. Then it is very clear that you are talking about the pure defacing. But this experiment has that there already. You need to extract it. Okay. Any questions? And then maybe oh, I really take a long time, but uh, I'm sorry, but this is a something called spin echo. Although they did for the MNR magnetic resonance, they are talking about many domain of magnets. But it's the same concept, right? This is real. Each of them represent one domain. So you see that we start with, uh, let's just wait, right? We start with here, apply a pi over two pulse, and then you will start deface. And this deface is look like you have many vectors, right? But in, uh, in, in the QP case, you only have one vector, but then you become shorter. And what they do is this. When, uh, when it goes down, some go faster, some go slower. I apply a pulse to rotate around it so that those go slower will be at the front and those go faster will be at the back. And they just wait for it and then put it back, which called the spin echo. Then you will re increase the T2 time. Okay, uh, just uh, some interesting thing to look at. Okay, so it's uh, 5.45, I will stop here. <laughs>